West Side oh, Beat Baseball World. We're going to show you how the West Side rocks today because we are all going all Cali Beat Baseball. Unfortunately, it, for now, host wise, it is just I, Seth Dog, and his 1922 computer is struggling to get online as we speak. And uh, my guests and I, we just got tired of waiting. So we're going to fire up the show. Bam Bam may join us, he may not. Uh, who knows and uh i guess on that same note before we jump in is a a small apology if i don't have the camera looking right whatever usually dependent on bam bam's kids (laughs) to make sure we're all lined up good and everything but you know i'm deal dog for one and two been doing this a while so you know how how bad can i mess up the angle of the camera wouldn't want you to miss my west coast dogs jersey that i am proudly wearing today but that is enough about us this is a or about me or about whatever this is an episode that been trying to to work out for a while i'm happy we finally did uh, because we got a a brand new beat baseball baseball program from my home state california welcoming in from the san gabriel valley panthers darren keepers b yang and jason esther hazing did i get it right right. jason yay deal dog yay (laughs) (laughs) welcome everybody how's it going hey how's it going very good good (laughs) Excellent, excellent. Now I'm just going to warn everybody that uh, Darren, you know, he, he's 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 a little soft spoken. He's on the quieter side. The truth is, he's really intimidated by me, and so I don't know if I'm going to be able to get him to come out of his shell while he's on the show. <laughs> But uh, <laughs> uh, actually, I, I guess I'm just going to be honest with the, the audience, Darren. Uh, J- uh, Darren has a softer voice, um, so you're going to have to perk your ears up when he's speaking. But he sounded good to us. Right, Darren? Thank you. <laughs> Darren, man, I, I guess we'll start with you because you have started this program um, to to the best of my knowledge uh, I'm, I'm going to ask you a personal question, though. First, and this is kind of a curiosity on my own part. Are are you being blind in your voice issues? Are they related? No, they're totally separate. Um, so you just got blind. lucky twice. <laughs> That's oh. just the one thing. You got lucky with two things. Actually, three times. Oh, well, all right. Go ahead. Tell us about it. The third one. I was getting glaucoma like 20 years after being total. So that was fun. <laughs> what did you say? Glaucoma? Yeah. So that, that started your visual uh, loss, I assume? No, so originally it was um, the optic nerve. Oh, wow. And then about 15 years later, I got glaucoma. I got my right eye removed. So, that was you know, that's, uh, that's something to, that uh, more through this show that I've encountered more than I expected is, is um, players like yourself who like were just destined to be blind. I believe Steve Stambaugh, when he was on the show not too long ago, Hall of Famer, um, it was the same kind of thing. Like, you know, he was a partial for years and years from one thing. And then, you know, like, as he got old, he's a total now from a totally different thing. That, you know, I think glaucoma was one of his two things as well. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so, that... Go ahead. With a voice, I have vocal cord paralysis. So my vocal cords don't move. Wow. So that's a that. 
Yeah, that, and the reason I jumped in right away asking if it was related um, is because I, I'm a, a member of the local NFB chapter, and I'm I'm newer to the group, and I'm just you know, getting to to know the other members. But one of the other members, she also like yourself, is blind, and um, and I don't know if her I, I've never talked to her directly, so I don't know if it's like voice paralysis, whatever. But um, you know, she she speaks, you know, like a, with a softer whisper as well and um it got me got me to thinking like is there something out there i've never heard of that's taking both eyesight and and vocal cords from somebody so that that's what made me uh, go down that route how did you find your way to uh our beat baseball world well um back in 2005 i played recreationally at the Brill Institute. Okay. And for about 12 years, I didn't play. There was nowhere to play. Right. At least nowhere you knew of. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I assume hadn't yeah. found like the MBBA yet. Right. So I just got a fire under me and decided to start my own thing. And uh, the, the outreach community and got started pretty quickly. Yeah, I don't. I don't know what you're doing for outreach, but I, I, you know, you, you guys are all down in uh, Southern California, and I'm, I'm in Northern California in the Sacramento area. But man, like right away, you started getting in touch with people, starting other teams. You got a junior program going. You're raising money. I mean, you, you just got a, a, a grant, I, I believe, uh, donated to your team. I, I don't know what uh, grants are considered donations or what they are, but you just received a grant towards your your beat baseball program with a lot of cash. I mean, you you you've really got that. You said you got a fire going, man. You you got an inferno going down there. You <laughs> you, you started that thing up pretty quickly. Especially considering we've been going through COVID and you couldn't even get people out of their house through a lot that's, of That's that's one thing you know that about California, about the wildfires. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <They> just... <laughs> yeah, unfortunately. We're a very dry state. Hot and dry is not good during the summer. Yeah. Yeah, you know it it's been a lot of work, but there's a lot of opportunity in California. Um, players and money. So, yeah, the, the player wise, that it's because uh, you know the MBBA now has been around since 1976, and there has never been a Southern California team that has ever made it to the World Series. The Northern California from San Francisco to Sacramento and Stockton is uh, had some good representation in the MBBA, but never in Southern, from Southern California and to a lot of us, not just here in uh, California, but around the United States, it's always been puzzling because LA has a humongous blind community. Yep. Yeah. Big blind community. So, all right, well, we're going to jump back to you. Let's bring uh, get some of your teammates rolling. I'll start out with you, Mister B Yang. What, right. What's your story, man? How How do you find like how, you know how, how how long you've been blind? How do you find the sport? Uh, so I have Libris congenital amaurosis or LCA. If you don't want to tie your tongue up, and yeah, that, uh, I've never uh, heard of it. <laughs> couldn't repeat that if, you, if I needed to. It's basically a genetic disorder. So I, okay. I myself like a human teenage ninja turtle <laughs> but uh i was born blind uh, i grew up with uh, three blind sisters and and uh, six other siblings that could see so family of 10 so Man, that's a humongous family <laughs> it's a tv yeah <laughs> <laughs> yep 
so you know, we growing up, we pretty much did everything else my other brothers and sisters did. And uh, I got into baseball. Um, I heard about the Boston Renegades, and I decided to check them out because I'm originally from Massachusetts. Oh, okay. Uh, I, uh, my buddy Shane Shannon Canton, he uh, hooked me up with Rob, and I really loved the sport. But then uh, I moved across the country to Washington in Spokane, and I really wanted to continue the sport. And they had a recreational team. And uh, so I hooked up with them and played with them uh, during my tenure at Washington. And then when I moved down here to Southern California, after my kids was born, uh, I, uh, funnily enough, reached out to uh, Stephen Guerra and said, hey, you know, I really love big baseball. Do you know of anything going on? And that just so happened to coincide with Darren setting up the team. Um, I had moved down here in August of 2017, and Darren started our first practice in what February of March eight uh, February of uh, 2018. Darren, oh, it's amazing. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. right. So <laughs> it just happened to coincide, and I uh, I've been with the Panthers since, and and, and uh, I love the sport. Yeah, that's a uh, it's a a cool uh, wrap around the world, you know. Touch on the yeah. Renegades. <laughs> I I actually uh, when I was part of the tournament committee did a site visit in Spokane. They were interested in uh, hosting the World Series, and in the end, they didn't. That's right. Uh, they yeah, didn't turn yeah. out to be a, a a great fit at the time. But yeah, um, I did get to know a couple of uh, your your uh, the the teammates you probably had up there or whatever. Yeah, like uh, Troy and. Uh couple of others there i met, i did meet troy and there's a, a woman i've been sitting here trying to remember vivian. her name vivian yeah i, yes. I was i there was seeing go. the letter v in my <laughs> head but i was not pulling out the name yeah so, yeah no i had a i had a good time up there um you know uh, uh because the the panthers um haven't yet um uh, been able to uh get to the world series uh when, and we we're going to talk about your plans of doing so this year as the show goes on but um b man last summer you played with the philadelphia fire how do you end up with that team for the world series basically uh I, they needed a couple extra bodies to fill out the roster and uh me being desperate to play <laughs> and having played in 2019 in Oklahoma, I really wanted to go back. Um, and as our team wasn't going that year, I decided to shot myself out. And, and uh, Philly picked me up, and I loved it. What a great team. Like, uh, seriously, the great camaraderie. And uh, just uh, Jeff is a great coach. Teammates are awesome. And, uh, we we've had uh, we've had a, a group of them on a couple different times. We've done a couple different shows with the Philly Fire, and I, I mean I totally agree with you. They're a great group. Each show was a lot of fun. Um, mm-hmm. What who who did you play with in, um, in 2019? I played with uh, Darren and I played with the Lone Star Roadrunners. Oh they, okay, yeah, Lone Star Roadrunners. All right, yeah, so that was that was my first debut to the World Series, and. Uh, I had a great time then too. And got rookie of the year. Yeah, rookie of the year. Oh, all right, all right, cool. I was I I wasn't aware of that, but uh, congratulations for that. I oh, I, uh, I I listened to some of the fire games that were streamed last mm-hmm. summer. I was really impressed with uh, your defense with them, especially playing with the team. You know what I mean that that you just kind of jumped in with or whatever. But I I was impressed with the defense you played. For oh, them. thanks. Uh, just. It's all the spotters, man. <laughs> <laughs> it always is, you know, but for all of us, it, it helps to have a good uh, supporting cast around us. Mm-hmm. All right, let's get the third member of this ensemble in here. Uh, Jason Esther Hazing. Esther Hazen. Yep, you got Hazen. it. <laughs> <laughs> man, I, it's amazing how quickly names leave my little tiny brain, man. Darren tells us you've got a very uh, unique kind of story, man. What, what's your what's your thing? How do you find us? Um, so I'm originally from South Africa. I've been in in the U.S. for four years now. Um, came here for a medical trial at UCLA. Um, I'm one of six people in the world that received a brain implant that would potentially restore functional vision to blind people. 
Okay. So I'm guinea pig number two. Um, <laughs> so that's what brought me here. And coming here and being like alone, it's just my wife and I, you know, no family, no support system. We, um, I just started reaching out on Twitter and Facebook to every blind like organization that I could find just to, I don't know, just to just reaching out, throwing yeah, darts, just to, see what, yeah, see what yeah. sticks, whatever. And then I, um, on Twitter, I came across um, Darren's tweets about the Panthers and blind baseball. And I'm like, wow, that sounds really cool. And I'd never played baseball in my life ever. Never picked up a baseball bat, nothing. So I sent him a tweet and I'm like, hey, man, uh, would I be able to come out to practice and see what it's all about? He invited me like, yeah, come over, check it out. Went out for my first practice in, oh, I think it was like February 2019. Um, yeah, first practice, went there with like sneakers and jeans. <laughs> Just, <you know. laughs> yeah, they pitched the ball to me, whacked it, ran, and it just like, put, well, put a, fu- a fire under me as well. I was like, yeah, I'm hooked. This is, this is what, what I'm going to do for now. Um, and six months later, I was playing in my first World Series. That was crazy. And I um, played for Philadelphia Fire. Oh, okay. um, yeah, they, they needed players, same as um, what B said. And they graciously invited me and said, like, yeah, come, check it out. And I had really great fun with them in Oklahoma. Um, got to travel for the first time by myself in a different country. It was very scary, but... You know, like going to the World Series for the first time, it was so liberating to just to be around people, you know, with the same disposition and just yeah. be free and enjoy the hotel and have fun and have some drinks and play some ball. And yeah, no, it was a truly awesome experience. And yeah, I would recommend or encourage anyone else to like just put yourself out there and like at least come out and try the sport. You know, uh, just going to what you were saying about the, the world series. Cause I mean, I, uh, I, I, I love the world series and there, there's no, no place like throughout my life where I just like, uh, was, was felt more at, at place, I guess, you know, yeah, and just comfortable. <laughs> yeah. And I, I, uh, this go like a year and a half ago when the, uh, COVID was, you know, real heavy and the NBA had their, their playoffs and what they called their bubble, you know, they just, <clears throat> excuse me, had a, had a, yes. a, 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 a bubble where, um, you know, all the teams were there. Nobody from the outside got to come in. Nobody from the inside got to go out. And I was telling Seth how, in a way, that's the way our, our World Series is. And because we all, for the most part, stay at the same hotel. And we're all living like this same little life every day, you know, all day long or whatever. And I was telling Seth how, like, you know, the, our World Series is almost like a bubble every year. And he pointed out what I, I thought was really profound, just how, like, it's a normal bubble for us. Like, that that's the uh, and I totally knew what he meant. Like that's the Ooh. most normal he ever feels because there's none of the sided like stuff that we put up with on a regular basis. How do you do this? How do you how do you eat without help? How do you cut you know the the silly Ooh. stuff that we we take on like every day all year round for the most part that. Um, challenges questions whatever feeling different you know what i mean it, it makes mm. you feel that you're kind of being pointed out as being different when you're in that situation but at the world series you don't deal with any of that because we are all like on an equal you know uh, yeah, it's like no you're not afraid of making any mistakes and having eyes or you know like that constant people looking at you oh, if i mess up now they're gonna laugh at me or you know just like yeah, that yeah, stupid yeah. thing you tell yourself in your head and over there it's like you're free to make mistakes you and you're learning so quickly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like once you've walked from your hotel room to the lobby by yourself for the first time and then find the bar, you're sorted. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to uh, indulge with you a little bit. Uh, Cause I mean, you, you pointed out you're unique. You're one of six people that have this, this implant. Could you, are you comfortable? Can you talk more about that? Tell the audience what that's about. So yeah, the, 
the device is called the Orion. It's a cortical implant. Um, it's a brain implant that's inside your brain, obviously, and then it's got an external device which consists of a camera on a pair of sunglasses, a little device that just lays on top of your, your hair or your scalp that then transmits information to the um, brain implant wirelessly. So this thing picks up whatever you're looking at, the, the camera, and then it translates it into electrical impulses, which then creates phosphines, these white dots that appear in your brain. So wow. for in, if I switch it on and I'm, I'll, I'm looking around in my apartment, I'll be able to like see, I'll ca- be able to count the lights in the roof, um, I'll be able to point out where the windows are, where a doorway is. Uh, it's just contrasting colors would basically pop up. But it took, I don't know, to better explain it, but when you're looking up at the stars at night, there's little white dots on a bla- black background. It, mm-hmm. That's what I see when I have a device on. So it's not like I'm seeing facial expressions and silhouettes of bodies and stuff. So it's still very... Um, New technology, but yeah. I mean, it's the first step. Uh, if this this thing gets FDA approved, it's going to open up the floodgates for dozens of other companies to implement better and newer technology, which is already being worked on. We're yeah. just basically the first stepping stone. What, what's ironic to me is like, it is very, I understand it is new technology and this is all like a new thing, but it's been in development forever i i yeah. lost my eyesight in 1979 um i was 10 almost 11 years old when i lost my sight and i uh, i was in an accident that took both of my eyes so both my eyes are prosthetics but i still had my optic nerves i mean i still have them but i assume they're they're long long past uh being anything usable but um my mom uh, right away was in touch with like doctors at Stanford University and what's the big one in uh, the DC area, George Hopkins, I think um, that, you know, just some big hospitals and doctors who then like had this same idea. Like, uh, you know, they, they basically broke down that the eyeballs a camera and if they could just make some kind of camera to put in and connect to your brain, mm. you know, and make it work and in, all these years later, over 40 years later, that's basically what they're, they're doing with you. Yeah, and that's crazy. And I mean, the, there was a previous um, study like this where this mad scientist, Dr. Dobell, actually took a bunch of people to Portugal where there wasn't FDA regulations, just implanted these devices and they had cords sticking out of their heads and these giant 20-pound Pentium 1 <laughs> computers hanging on their belts. <laughs> And I mean, that was like the first time that this thing actually worked. And now, you know, 20, 30 years later, it's, I can clip it on my belt. And maybe after my trial, it will be smaller and better. Yeah. You know, it's just going to, I see my devices like the Nokia 3310 of brain implants. <laughs> you know, it's just like, it'll get there. We, we can play Snake now. And... <laughs> oh, <well. laughs> yeah. Pro- anyway. Props to you for being willing to, you know, like jump in. Cause I have to assume, you know, going in, like you might not see the end product uh, through, through your experience, but you're going to be part of someone else who will get to probably down the exactly. road. Exactly. Yeah. Now I'm just lucky to be here and be a part of it for sure. Yeah. And I found B baseball. Yeah. Right. That's, right. <laughs> that big That's the key component, guys. That's yes. the key component. So, my apologies, Darren and, and B, for <laughs> indulging a little bit, but I don't know. I think that's something. Uh, you know, being that we're we're all uh, this is a blind sport. I, I figure our audience uh, would probably be interested in knowing what was going on with that. Oh, no, you're all good. Jason's a pioneer. <laughs> what do you say? Jason's a what? A pioneer. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. So let's uh, let's dive uh, full on into your uh, program, Darren. Starting with you, and starting with uh, the the realistic um, ness of, of you guys making the World Series for the first time this year. Yeah, um, we're fortunate to uh, receive um, a few grants. 
Um, and all of our players made it back after the pandemic. Well, the worst of the pandemic. Yeah, right. Um, and uh, we got the volunteers coming in, and it, it's going to happen. Yep. It's going to happen. Is everybody, like outside, I know the three of you, uh, you know, or uh, you've already been playing. I know you guys are fired up, but the, the rest of your program is, uh, are, are people ready to, to get out there and see what it is that you guys have been experiencing the last few years? Yeah, they're, they're hungry for it. They've been watching the streams and they're ready. Um, that's one thing about the Panthers. Every player is totally blind. Oh, wow. We don't have any virtual. So. As a total, I, I take pride in that. Like Seth and I, yeah. uh, he is, uh, Bam Bam, my, my co-host, uh, is also a total. And when we, when we um, you know, we're with the dogs and winning championships and stuff, like um, Danny Fapiano, Seth and I, uh, all in the line, like, like a, lot, a lot of teams, uh, they, they aren't made up of a lot of totals. Like uh, mm. there, there are totals on pretty much every team. Uh, but I, I don't know what the numbers were at all, but I remember Seth and I taking a lot of pride in like half of our lineup and our DH was a total also. So like out four of our seven starters were totals and we, we, we took pride in that. I you know, I don't know why I'm not trying to take anything from our, our partial players, but we took pride in that. So. And I think that just tells me that. There are a lot more players out there who are virtual. Definitely. And uh, we're going to have multiple teams to fill up. So. You know, and, and I, was, I was thinking about it too after I was done talking. I, I think a part of that um, is the fact that it, it's easier to teach a partial player the game than it is a total, at least on offense. Because uh, somebody who's been blind their entire life, it didn't, I mean, even if you're not a sports fan, you've swung a bat on a ba on a schoolyard or in the street mm -hmm. with your neighbors or, you know what I mean? You've seen it on TV. Like you have yeah, a so visual you know idea. Yeah, you have yeah. an idea. Taking a total and giving them a bat and, and teaching like an uppercut, like the majority of totals when they swing for the first time, if they've never done it or seen it before, they it's more like they're like chopping wood. You know what I mean? Yeah, you have, mean. To, you uh -huh. have to teach them <laughs> from scratch a complete yeah. uh, something they've never seen before. And it's, it's mm -hmm. a big challenge. Yeah, uh, that could be sure how valuable. Colby, our head coaches, um, he's one of the most patient guys you'll meet. And, uh, you know, he, he's on to all of us, great, our swing. Um, when we started in 2018, he was the only volunteer. Mm -hmm. So when he would pitch, and if we didn't hit the ball, he would run to go get it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so there, there was no catcher for him yeah. to aim at. It would be him pitching. Yeah. And if there were people on the field, he would spin around and... That's a good way to well, get exercise. Doing everything like that. Yeah, right. <laughs> Is he still your pitcher today? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. We've had other pitchers that are coming on. Um, but Kobe's the one constant. 
in the barrel. Yeah, that's a, I mean, it, I, um, like when I've talked to new teams over the years, um, you know, often they're, they're like worried that they don't like have the perfect coaching staff right out of the gates. And I found that that's just something like you pick people up over time. Like you got this guy, you know, uh, from the very beginning, he stuck around, but I'm sure e- each year, like somebody new kind of comes along, maybe one or mm. two extra people, but you know, you, you just kind of, you're, you're not going to build a, a championship team in your first year. Um, so, you know, you just kind of take the, the people, People as you could get them and more more come along a, as you go um b let me ask you because i uh i remember way back uh, when i first started playing it was just for a team here locally in sacramento that had no world series experience and then one of our bay area teams the north bay nemesis picked me up and took me to the world series in 87 and when i came back to my own team in 1988 like just the experience of being around a world series team and at the world series like i brought so much information to my my local team and experience um do you uh, have you felt that too since you've been playing with uh, other teams like lone star and philly Definitely. Um, have, have you been bringing a, a lot of experience back to your t- teammates in socal yeah definitely i uh I've always been competitive, but nothing near to the degree that I am now. I would say that even my teammates think I'm a little intense because <laughs> you know I want to play and I play hard every every inning. You know every nice. you know, and uh, I think that uh, before I went to the World Series, I'd play, but it was like, yeah, if I win, I lose. I don't care, you know. And uh, you know, my wife's the opposite. By the way, I uh, my wife's also blind. She also plays for the Panthers. No, sweet. Yeah, Sweet. beat baseball. We actually met through beat, beat baseball, so you know the sport actually holds awesome. a great deal of, uh, you know, uh, importance in my heart. But yeah. I. What, uh, what's her name? Her name's Christy. Hey, Christy! Shout out! Shout out! Yeah. You go get her. Uh, <laughs> is, is she go get involved with Wolf? Do you know the women of she, our league? We were actually going to go last year, but we couldn't find a babysitter for our two kids. So oh, okay. Yeah, she couldn't make it out. Um, but uh, hopefully. Uh, this year and next year, um, she'll be able to make it out. And uh, yeah. Um, so yeah, I uh, after I came home with the World Series for the first time in 2019, it lit a fire into me, and it, it was it's so, such a great experience that uh, I felt like um, you know sharing it, lighting the same fire under other guys, and uh, I think that uh, not necessarily that I was taught this or that but more a sense of now i know what to strive for i see i see the end result of yeah real top tier team looks like and i want you have a goal yeah a goal to work for yeah i feel you i feel you jason i'm gonna ask you uh, we just talked about your picture a little bit but I'll ask you more about about your 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 team's offense and readiness that you stepped in and and uh, got a hit first time you ever faced your pitcher. Do you feel like you guys are are ready for the World Series? Yeah, I, I really think we are ready. Like like B said, we learned a lot going to the World Series and coming back and being able to like share with the team. You know a four hour practice on a Saturday is nothing compared to like five days in the sun <laughs> game, you know, back to back to back. It's, yes. it's tiring. It's, it's tough. So getting the team like ready physically and mentally, I think we're, we're solid. Our defense is awesome. We had a couple of people from different teams. Um, again, me bad with names. Um, you can probably help me Darren and beat, but that, <laughs> Um, I think Tanner came out and yeah. taught us some drills. Yeah. Lupe came out and he taught us some drills. So we've we've learned a lot from other teams that have been around for quite a while. So um, I think our defense is pretty solid. Our batting is solid. Like we have a bunch of big hitters. Um, and yeah, uh, some fast runners. For sure. I, I really think we stand a good chance to um, make a name for ourselves this year. Shout out to Tanner Gears and Lupe Perez, uh, yeah. the two you were uh, 
referencing. So give us a couple names for your team. Who are some players? The, the three of you have been at the World Series and play with other teams. Um, give me a, give me a couple names from uh, your, your team of people that we should look out for this summer. Okay, so we have Alex Marisitz. All right. He's really fast. So, same as be intense on the defense, on the ball, like freaking a fat kid on cake. Um, <laughs> we have cake. John. John. Uh, what's John's Jairo. last number? Gyro. Say again. I didn't catch that. John Gyro. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Or just call him John. Yeah, Johnny okay. R. So, John. <laughs> so, yeah, he's also like fire, ready and, you know, all set up to go out to. And the he's area. an ex goalball player, so he knows. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. So mm-hmm. he's got yeah. a little experience. In yeah, he's, he's, blind he's, he's really good on the defense. Nice. We have Betsy. Um, she's uh, one of the girls on our team. Real good player, all over player. Um, her and Chrissy are actually the only two girls on our team, but right. solid players. Um, we have Brendan Wright. Mm-hmm. Massively um, improved since his first practice. Yeah. <laughs> Incredible leaps and bounds forward. I think he would just yeah. like a 30-second base run, and he has improved that by incredible amounts. Nice. Yeah. yeah. I hope so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, you know, he's actually one of the guys on our team that might be able to hit a home run off his first hit. Yeah, All right, for sure. Big hitter. 30 seconds is fine for him. Um, <laughs> we have Eric Varela. Um, same, Eric as well. He did a base run, like, I think it was, like, just over six seconds the other day at practice. And he's a big hitter. Like big guy, so um, he's gonna do some damage. Nice. Um, sure. Yeah, Who am I he, missing? Obviously, B. Darren. We uh, have. You know, I wasn't trying to put pressure. You got. You don't have to name off the whole team. I just wanted it to give. Uh, you know, our our your your competitors, uh, yeah. some, some some people to look for. I think Tell that's it. our that's our advantage right now. Like no one knows us. Yeah. No no one knows what we have in store. And I feel yeah. we have a solid team. And yeah, we're gonna surprise some people. I'm sure of it. Since the uh, the the March Madness Final Four is going on right now, we'll call that a Cinderella team. Got us a yes. Cinderella <laughs> team, possible Cinderella yeah. team. I guess you guys have to make a little run before you become a Cinderella team, but yeah. got us a possible Cinderella team. <laughs> Darren, man, before we get out of here, tell us more about what else is going on with um, Southern California. I want to give a shout out to uh, Richie Flores because as we on the last episode ran down the names of all the teams that are registered with the MBBA. And the, the uh, is it the Pasadena Cubs or yeah. Southern? Mm-hmm. Okay, Pasadena Cubs. Uh, and, you know, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a baseball fan and a Dodger fan. So right away I'm like, Cubs, man, California <laughs> team, go by the Cubs. But Richie Flores pointed out, it's like, maybe, you know, maybe they're talking like little baby Panthers. Like, oh, yeah. and, and it turns out, Darren, that, that you are. Tell us more about what else is going on in Southern Cal. Yeah, so our goal is for every adult team to have a youth team. Um, just to, you know, help develop them young. Um, it's, a, it's a good way, like, I, if if we had had young teams going here in Northern California all those years ago, maybe all our Northern California teams wouldn't have died out. You know what I mean? Mm, so yeah. it, it's a good plan for a long for the future. Yeah. 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 No, it's actually Richie's idea to use a beep kickball for the youth. Yeah. That way it's lighter. Um, not as painful. <laughs> but it, it also, the beep kickball makes playing the sport realistic for kids. Because, yeah. I mean, our, yeah. our ball is a one-pound ball. So, yeah. 
Yeah, it, it would You're take, not going to hit it out. A hundred. You have to feet. like, like Bam Bam. He at, at fifteen, he was six three, two hundred and ten pounds. Like obviously he could play, but that's an unusual human being for right, a teenager. Right. You know, like right. it, it's too heavy, and you know, unless you have a great pitcher, what's going to excite a kid about playing beatball? Mm-hmm. If you know, if they can't hit or whatever, so. Um, the the invention of the the beep kickball and and using that as a way for kids to learn like the beginnings of beep baseball, I I think it's brilliant, really. So. Yeah, yeah, I love that idea. Um, when when you say all of your adult teams, because there is there a total of three um, adult teams in Southern Cal? So we have two. Okay. Yeah, me, me and Chrissy are my boots on the ground for the Santa Carina team. I am a very handsome boot. Yes. <laughs> and uh, we named the team. Um, and we did talk with Jennifer Goss just to make sure they were okay with the team name um, since the little close. Stockton Stingrays versus Santa Clarita Stingers. Yeah. Somewhat similar. <laughs> so we just wanted to make sure that we know. Yeah, and they were really happy about it. They're excited for us. And then, uh, I was telling you about Mark Pritchard. He's in Orange County. And uh, he's currently a Panther. But he's leading the charge for an Orange County team. Um, I, I believe I follow them on Twitter. What's the name of the Orange County team? Um, we don't have a team yet. Oh, I thought I I thought there was a like an Orange County something something. Yeah, before. I I kind of played with that early on. Okay, but we're gonna change that up. Okay. Um. So it's just kind of in development right now. Yeah. He actually is getting a group together. To play next Thursday in Orange County, like just an exhibition, or like one of your teams is going to go play there. What What's the game? Uh, yeah, Mark just has like two or three guys that are coming out, and they're gonna just kind of play some recreational. Okay. Okay. Yeah, no, to introduce this the sport to new yeah. players in Orange County. Yeah. So just yeah, like an out, outreach, outreach, trying to mm-hmm. get interest. All right. Yeah. So I expect so call me baseball to have an Orange County team in 2023. Um, nice. He's already recruited the Lions Club down there to help with that. Equipment. They're gonna try and get a free field to play on. So uh, it looks like we'll have three teams next year up and running. That'd be really good, just for all your development. You know, mm-hmm. giving giving you games to play and yeah. getting experience b let me ask you then um like with the stingers like how far out uh do you feel like they it, it, it do you plan to like stay with the panthers for the world series or do you plan to get the stingers to the world series also down the road so down the line i definitely want the stingers to get to the world series but as of now we only have two players i plan to get uh plugged into possibly the school systems uh to see if there are any uh, blind youth out here right. uh, reach out um and uh, recruitment and and then from there kind of branch out um i've been reaching out like on the uh 
you know, just uh, Facebook pages across the, that have to deal with blindness to see if anyone lives around this area right. or to it that would be interested in playing. Uh, definitely for now, I still consider myself a Panther, but yeah, uh, later down the line, definitely will we'll be hoping to attend the World Series as, as the Stingers and uh, crushing the Panthers. Sorry, Dan. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> Oh, look That's at that, calling his shot before the team even face each other. Shots fired. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I think that's smart, though. Uh, I mean, I you know, I understand that everything outside the Panthers is totally just in development right now. But mm. I think it, I, I think it's smart, uh, a smart approach to build one and get it going and, and branch off it from there, rather than having three teams completely in the like brand new development and, yeah. and, and I don't know, taken away from it. Kind of like when you're, you're building it, trying to build a, like a, a restaurant franchise, you know, if you, if you just put, put restaurants all over the place before you even develop your restaurant, you know what I mean? Mm. It, it's not a good long-term plan. So I think yeah. you guys have a good approach for just making it happen down the road. Yeah. That helps that. You know, me and Christy know what they're doing. Yeah, and, uh, you know, I'll, I'm the president. I'll get them the funding. Um, you know, they, as long as they show up, help the new people learn. Mm -hmm. You know, I think, I think they'll be successful. Yeah, I, uh, I, I have felt forever that really uh, every beatball team, I mean, some teams have a, a really good group, like a board or whatever that, that runs the team. But most teams, I feel like for the most part, like one, two, maybe three people carry the majority of the load and everybody else, you know, for the most part shows up, everybody pitches in or you, you wouldn't have success, but for the most part, there's usually just a couple people that take on the like the real responsibility of running the team. So it's good, like with B and Christy and the Stingers, like they're they know what they're getting into. It's not just a couple people saying, "Man, I'd like to start a team," and then getting overwhelmed with, "Oh my God, I didn't know <laughs> it would take mm -hmm. this." So uh, I I think the fact that you know that well both the Orange County team and, and the Stingers. Um, have people who know what they're getting into, you mm -hmm. know, no mm -hmm. surprises and it, it gives a bet each, each program a better chance of succeeding. I think. Yeah. And yeah. Awesome that, uh, we have the 18 team pioneers. Um, all in. They, the singers are going to have seven or eight pioneers showing up volunteering um, now that's uh that's impressive i mean it, it's uh, uh beat baseball has just like a long long time standing relationship with pioneers but yeah. as as the landline world has kind of died out and and like you know that i mean because that's where the telephone pioneers like came from is phone companies and um, like the cellular cell cellular world is so different from the the landline world. So, like over the years, it seems like the uh, the pioneers are harder and harder to find. But if you guys have have found some and they're they're coming out there, uh, props to that. That's cool. Yeah, that, that, that goes back to the beginning of beat baseball. The pioneers had something to do with like getting the the balls going from the beginning. So that's mm. way cool. Yeah, that chapter. Has committed um, four thousand a year. Wow! Born. Wow! That's good seed money right there. Yeah. Helps a lot. <laughs> yeah, I might have to move down to Southern California. There's no money flowing up here like that. <laughs> yeah, we'd love to have you as a stinger. <laughs> oh, throw that out there! <laughs> oh, look at that! There's the three players. <laughs> She'll call you the Santa Clarita shark. 
<laughs> well, fellas, I, I really don't have anything else, uh, you know, that I've prepared for you. Do you uh, have anything about the program you want to put out there that we did not touch on? I just have a little shout out that I want to do. Um, sure. We recently got some help from the Los Angeles Baseball Association or the Los Angeles Baseball League. Um, it's a league of amateur, like recreational players that started up a league here, just, just with people that basically love playing baseball, but never did it professionally or anything. And um, they actually reached out to us and they are now, you know, coming to the practices and volunteering and wow. they've been a great help so far. And yeah, I mean, it's awesome for, you know, the normal sighted baseball um, you know, team to actually just come out and represent and help out where they can. So I just wanted to thank them for coming out as well yeah, and joining the Panthers. Yeah. And good on you guys getting all kinds of people coming out. Yeah. You guys go ahead. Go ahead, Darren. That's the call for sure. Just, you know, just get out there and keep growing up. If, if for any reason you guys don't make the World Series, there's going to be an avalanche of criticism because you got money, you've got volunteers, you've got interested players. So <laughs> I, I'll say it's a done deal. This Panther team is off and running for this year. Yeah, yeah, we'll be there. We're ready. Yeah, we're solid. We have to. We have to. We already booked the hotels and rented the van. So I mean, <laughs> even if we're just coming for the after party, we're coming. We're coming <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Well, man, I had a lot of fun talking with you guys. I'm glad uh, Glad we finally got this done. Thanks for setting it up, Darren. Yeah, I appreciate you having us on. Yeah, thank you so much for having Thanks us. Thanks a lot. Absolutely. My pleasure. Look forward to following up on you guys and, and just seeing how everything plays out. And that is it for this week, everybody. We're going to have Nick Silver on the show next week. Nick, Nick's going to Nick, Nick, somebody who's always got an opinion about stuff. So I think it's going to be really easy for us to find stuff to talk about. So Nick's going to come on next week. Uh, Nick Silver of the Indy Edge. He's going to straighten us out on a few things. <laughs> Just kidding. We don't even have any. I don't even know what we're going to be talking about. But I'm positive we'll find something. Till then, everybody, be well, be safe, be smart. And we will be back with you next time around. Take care.